When I was being bullied, video games were my escape. Growing up, being transgender and having Tourette's has made inclusivity very important to me. I'm a video games designer. I want to make games that everyone can play. I decided to make a dance game because I wanted to share what I loved with the rest of the world. And I know dancing is really inaccessible to so many people, so I want to try to bring it to more people. I first started dancing when I was five years old. My mom bought me this little tutu and I called it my ballet suit and I wore it all over the house and danced all over the place. My Tourette syndrome didn't kick in until like I was about 12 years old. I had a lot of vocal tics where I would just say, how, 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 repeatedly. I ended up being bullied a lot. Dancing helped with my Tourette's. I first became aware that I was trans probably around 15 years old. I didn't come out until I was 18. It was something that I kept in the closet for a long time because I felt ashamed. <laughs> Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is my favorite game of all time. I love the open world aspect of the game. I love being able to climb up mountains. I love being able to swim across rivers. A lot of people always uh, refer to Link as Zelda when that's wrong. For me, that reminds me of when people would call me by my old name for a long time after I came out as trans. Breath of the Wild came out in 2017. I came out October of 2017. Oh. <laughs> Messed up. I'm studying video game design at NYU. I was awarded a scholarship from the ESA Foundation. What got me thinking about going into game design was I really enjoyed creating interactive pieces of studio art. My freshman year of college, I created a very personal piece. Um, it's essentially how I came out as transgender to my friends and family. This rotating, uh, looping gif of me getting splashed in the face with pink paint. I want to give people actual trans representation in video games so people can feel what I felt when I could relate to Link, but I want that representation to be genuine. I created another personal project, which was Tix. Tix is a game about my life experiences with Tourette's Syndrome. In Tix, you play as me navigating your way down the hallway to class before the bell rings every day. The more you bump into classmates, the more your anxiety meter is going to go up. Once your anxiety reaches a certain point, you're going to have a tick. How, how, how? I'm starting to talk to my peers. I'm about three ticks in, and their reactions are already starting to change. Uh, what is his problem? That was something I heard a lot. Incoming Messages is my latest project. It is about dealing with an online abusive relationship and how to get out of it. The relationship is between someone who identifies as a woman and someone who identifies as non-binary. I think that was important to have that representation. You reach the climax of the game when everything is going wrong and you need to get out of the relationship. Your friends literally have to take your phone from you. So that's incoming messages. My new game is called Spotlight, and it is an adaptable VR dancing experience for people who may not get to perform ballet on a stage. One important feature of my game Spotlight is going to be how it's customizable for people with different disabilities. You have rhythmic cues floating around you in VR, and you match them with your head and your arms. Yep, one, two, it's right in front of my face. Eventually, the targets will appear in rhythm to the music. For the initial prototype, it will be to the Sugar Plum Fairy in the Nutcracker. My best work comes from when I'm being authentic to myself. Creating games that are about my real life experiences are really important to me. I would love to be part of a group of developers that starts a grassroots movement to create more accessibility features and games. I think we need more of them in the AAA games industry. 